Good morning, and welcome to New Food Who Dis, the show where we get reacquainted with food that's antiquated. And today, I'm gonna make mush souffle. Ah, mush. Simply hearing the word makes me just as soft. But then you go and add a souffle onto that shit? Consider me fluffed. You trying to smush right now? No. But if you've never heard of mush souffle, don't feel bad, because neither had I until I came across it in the uh, Book of Tribe Recipes here, published circa 1900. And according to this book, mush souffle is an entree which should have as its chief characteristic daintiness. And if a wet mound of food ain't dainty, I don't know what is. But before you go planning your next meal around this elegant sounding dish, I want to test it for you. We've got all the ingredients right here, and I'm going to cook it up right now. The recipe's in the description if you want to follow along. So to get started, I've set up a metal bowl over a pot of simmering water to create a double boiler so we can heat up the milk without burning it. Then we'll uh, add the cornmeal gradually to cook, stirring, uh, for about five to six minutes. So that's been about five minutes and this looks uh, about as thick as Yonce. Then we will uh, whisk in some butter, salt, and the yolks of the eggs. Now before I put this back on the flame, I'm going to beat the remaining egg whites to like a fluffy consistency. So now that I've got the cornmeal back on the heat, um, I'll cook it for two minutes. Then we're going to fold in the whipped egg whites, being careful not to knock out too much of the air, and turn it into a buttered baking dish, and bake it in a moderate oven for 30 minutes. So while that's baking, I figured I could give you some background on the origins of mush, and if you're lucky, I might cook up another version of it. Because who doesn't want that? Mush's origins could arguably go back to the invention of cornmeal, said the annoying kid in class. Because in general terms, mush is just cornmeal that's been boiled in water or milk. Mush could be grits, or it could be polenta. But trust me, it's not Italiano. But in America, you find it in two specific forms. In the South, it's more commonly referred to as kush, or kush kush, or kush kush. It's usually boiled or fried up in a pan with other ingredients like salty pork. Sometimes you even use uh, leftover cornbread and just kind of mix it together like a hash. It was a hearty dish for folks that just didn't have a lot, which is really an understatement when you consider the fact that it was probably first cooked in America by Africans who were brought over as slaves. Kush kush, or kush kush, is really just a derivative of couscous, which has North African roots. And as the dish made its way to other communities and up north into the Midwestern United States, it kind of changed a bit. Rather than mixing it up and cooking it in a pan like a hash, it was boiled, left to congeal, sliced up, and cooked in a pan like one of them big old cornmeal sausages. Woo-wee! And all joking aside, that's actually how this dish lives on today in many regions like in the Midwest and within certain communities like the Amish. The Amish? Fucking party animals? And while researching this, I actually learned that you can still buy it in like tube and brick form from not just one, but two manufacturers in Ohio. So I ordered some, it took about four or five days to get it shipped. Boom, Jackson's tube form. Boom, Walnut Creek brick. And I think that we should fry these babies up old school humble style and see how they compare to this highfalutin mush souffle we're cooking up right now. Oh my God. And that's perfect timing, wow. They were both done at the exact same time and it was definitely not the magic of editing. All right, there it is. That's got some nice color on top. So let's plate this shit up. Oh, fuck. So when I taste this, I'm gonna taste it a couple different ways, just straight. And then I'm also gonna try these with syrup which is the traditional way to eat this. I'm also gonna try it with uh, some hot sauces. I'm actually just remembering the shirt I'm wearing underneath and I'm wondering if it's an omen. There, is that where I'm gonna go? Time will tell. All right, let's dig in, baby. I'm gonna start with the souffle. I mean, it's good. It's delicious. It's fluffy, it's light. It, it tastes kind of like uh, like if you made a cornbread omelet, which only a maniac would do, but it's tasty. Get back there. Now let's try the fried mush style. Let's try the Jackson one first. Mm. 
That's delicious. That's really good. You know what it tastes like? Did you ever like get those like French toast sticks at like school in the cafeterias? Where it had like a weird texture where, you know, like it probably wasn't bread, but it was trying to imitate fried bread. Hmm. And you get some of that hot sauce mixed in. Try the brick form. Hmm. The brick one definitely has like more of a corn taste. Well, it tastes a lot like masa or like a corn tortilla. It's really good though. Okay, one more bite. Just one more, one more bite. And then I'll just finish it. Whoops. Both of these things are delicious. That's delicious, that's delicious. But now the question is why and how did that become that? Why make something that's perfectly good into a souffle? I could only find one other example of mush souffle being in a recipe book and it was from an issue of Good Housekeeping from 1903. So why? Why, did it, why was it even there in the first place? My theory, and I could be wrong, is that making it into a souffle was an attempt to glamorize an otherwise humble kind of dish. Make it classier for aspiring homemakers, or, uh, you know, maybe it might have just been those in the Midwest and North just kind of turning their nose up at the southern roots of this. Either way, I know that the dish just did not survive past the early 1900s. Even though the mush souffle was delicious, it just wasn't necessary. Sometimes you just don't need to gussy up a perfectly good recipe. There's an old saying that you can't polish a turd, especially if that turd is delicious. Nom, 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 nom. So for this dead recipe of mush souffle, what say ye? Rip or resurrect? Well, I wholeheartedly say resurrect, if for no other reason than it being delicious. And as far as the uh, old school sliced version goes, AKA OG mush, um, I think that deserves a re-up too, because pff, why should the Amish have all the fun? So in summary, I think you should give it a try. It's easy to do, you can get the ingredients at your average grocery store. Give this version a try too. Support these uh, small businesses in Ohio that are turning out this old school classic. You know, together we can keep mush alive. So I want you to say it with me. More mushing for the pushing. More mushing for the pushing. More mushing for the push. More mushing for the push.